somebody somewhere is screwing these high school recruits. And it's not the NCAA this time. You are locked on Oklahoma State, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma State Cowboys, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, y'all, and hello, all. Welcome back to Locked On Oklahoma State, your daily stop for all things cowboy and cowgirl related. My name is Cody Stovall. I want to thank you kindly for stopping by to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. This is uh, an interesting one. As I said in the very beginning, somebody somewhere is screwing these high school recruits. I think this is vitally important. Now, whenever you think of going through any type of process, even if it's going through a job, there are some things that pop up that kind of make it more of a contingency plan than plan A, right? That happens. That's part of life. But also part of life is teaching properly, right? Especially these young men, because as kids, we don't think, right? We do stupid stuff. We say stupid stuff. We think stupid stuff. We make mistakes. We need people there to help guide us along the way. And used to be the recruiting process, yeah, it could kind of get thick in the woods with some of the stuff that was going on back in the day. But at the end of the day, it was the parents, the kid, and the high school coaches. Those that's that was the council, right? There was some family members mixed in. And of course, you always had buddies that were like, dude, you should go to this university. Or, dude, you should go to this university. Or, Bro, how cool would it be if you went to this university? But regionality mattered, right? Rivalries mattered. Conference mattered. Getting to the NFL, it did matter. But there was so much more that came before that. And it's, it's just not the case anymore. So when I say somebody somewhere is screwing a high school athlete that you likely know, it's a fact. Right. Let's read a couple things, put this in perspective. When you think of, you know, coming up through sports, you think of the leadership, the accountability, the discipline, the work ethic, the ability to work well with other people. You're not always going to have agreement. They're not always going to have disagreements either. But you got to sift through a bunch of stuff to learn how to make these things applicable to life. And some things that come into play are typically words that nowadays I feel like. We forget the meanings to. Character, yeah, it's a thing. It still matters. Um, Let me read this. I'm old. Also, pardon my my baby blues adjusting here. Uh, Character, the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual. A person that is obviously dedicated to themselves internally. Right? And again, I think that 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 matters. Commitment. The state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. Even better, an engagement or obligation that restricts freedom of action. I should highlight that. I hope I did verbally, vocally, visually, whatever. Because, you know, the word doesn't mean what you think it means is what comes to mind sometimes. When you went through the recruiting process back in the day, it was a big deal, right? It it wasn't a big pageant fest, right? You weren't putting on some massive contest. It was a it was a business decision, but it was a, a business decision that was made in conjunction with right the the core nucleus that was going to be involved in the upbringing of that young man because you are releasing your child to a coach coaching staff group of coaches that are not only there to help your your son or or daughter develop physically but mentally as well part of dealing with adversity and learning to fight through things is typically what helps make people more successful in life if you're given a bunch of stuff you're probably not going to have a crap ton of work ethic this is logical i'm not throwing shade at anybody but 
as parents, like I have kids, I have a son right now going through the recruiting process. It is different than when I went through the process. It's way different. So aside from having people in their ear the entire time, you're also going to have nowadays NIL, right? You're also going to have the things that are offered. You've recently seen some USC players and the high-rise luxury lofts and stuff that they get. That's great. Good for those people. But in my opinion, to some degree, that just adds uh, a little bit of separation. Right? There, it, it will cause some animosity. No matter how much you love your buddy, if he's making more money than you and you think that you're better than him, there's going to be animosity. Right? And you've seen some of it not work out recently with Texas A&M. You've seen some of it not recently work out with, with other places like Miami, right? Because at the end of the day, character is part of commitment. When you commit to something, that your character is what guides you to that commitment. When you commit to a marriage, you're committed. That means there's a very, 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 very small sliver of anything that could happen that makes it suitable to just Walk away from that situation. You don't have to go too deep into some of the text to just think about it from a logical perspective. But whenever you see it as a child that essentially giving up is not that big of a deal. Essentially just showing up means something. Essentially you know, backing out of something, well, it's just not the same anymore. It's not that big of a deal anymore. Am I questioning the character of kids who use the word commitment abso freaking lutely? And it's not on them. Somebody, somewhere, led them to this. It could be parents. It could be coaches. It could, it could be a multitude of things. But what it also could be is seven-on-seven seven related. Seven-on-seven seven is still relatively new. 707 was just becoming a thing when I was finishing high school. And it, back then, it was all designed to help you get better for your high school football team. It wasn't all individualistic. It wasn't about a bunch of tournaments and, and grabbing this guy from this state and this guy from this state so we win, win a bunch of trophies, get a bunch of exposure, get our Instagram rocking and rolling get our twitter dinging or whatever it's just it, it's a world we live in but it starts somewhere these these kids they do not come by this random information randomly right some things no matter how coincidentally they are are not a coincidence i have an athlete and if you have an athlete I would hope that part of your idea is to get the most out of them, which means the best coach that you think can pull the most out of him, the best system, not just for football, but who's going to guide your child? And it, what is your child being guided by? If it's dollar bills, I think it's probably going to be a difficult proposition. Obviously not y'all, but there's some people that out there that are out there that don't listen to this show that probably take the stance of, well, you know what, Johnny? If it doesn't work out here at this high school, we'll just go to another high school. If you don't like that coach, we'll go to another high school. If your stepmom or whatever biological mom lives at the other side of town and you want to use that high school and use that address, we'll just go down there and do that. And if that's the case, which you're seeing all the time, transferring in high school now, it's another minor form of free agency. When I was in high school, it was a big deal. You knew every kid in the state that was worth his salt that transferred. And you knew that there was probably something sketchy behind it because you knew, as an Oklahoman, it was not a coincidence, right, that the, a lot of the best players in the Tulsa area went to Jinx Reunion. All right? It's not a massive secret, but... 
right? It had to be under the table kind of, right? You had to finagle it around. It's not the same anymore. Apparently, you can just bounce. And, you know, one one thing I will say, if you're going to you're going to be bouncing around, feeling athletic, looking athletic and being athletic, they can all go hand in hand. And in order to do that in today's society, you got to be comfortable. And the only way you can do all of those and still be riding in style and comfortable at the same time is with bird dogs. Yeah, guys, this stuff is ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. I can only talk about me, my perspective, but my perspective, I athletically, to some degree, physically, have to do a lot of things that are not exactly normal. So on a daily basis, my routine for getting mobile, agile, and hostile requires some comfort involved. And bird dogs is the most comfortable, most bees knees piece of clothing I've ever put on. And I have spent a significant amount of money in my day at sporting goods stores on golf shorts because I love shorts. And the boxers that are built in, it's it's just it's ridiculous. You can walk in them, swim in them, fight in them, sleep in them. Doesn't matter. They're that good. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. Locked on college, all being one word. Again, that is birddogs.com slash locked on college. And right now, when you get yourself hooked up on your order of bird dogs and find out what clothing works best for you, you also get the baddest Yeti tumbler in the game with multiple bird dogs logos on it. So Make sure you go to birddogs.com slash locked on college. Get yourself hooked up on the bees knees of bird dogs and get that Yeti tumbler and let me know what you think. Yeah, so when I'm saying I, I, I question the character of the kid, it's it's not necessarily the kid. It's what's being pushed behind it. And that stuff matters. And where you send your child for seven-on-seven and tournaments over the summer, it matters. Right? It just just does. And if you're sending your kid to, let's say, seven-on-seven coach, that let's let's use the example, hates Oklahoma State, had one bad run-in with one coach at one time in his career and decided he just hates Oklahoma State. It might not be valid. But if that 7-on-7 coach gets more kids and it keeps growing, do you think that this stuff is going to be completely isolated? No, it's not. So now it's not just the high school coaches and the the family that are, you know, helping make the decision for the child. Now you've got a bunch of outside sources that are telling your child what is best for them. And oftentimes it's completely different than what the high school coach wants. That's the thing is seven on seven has gotten skewed over time. It's not so much about the development of kids anymore. It's more about the development of X, Y, and Z organization to make the dollar dollar bills. And again, then agendas become involved. And when agendas become involved, it's not going to be an accurate fulfillment of what you want for your child to have accomplished. I'm not trying to lecture here, but You recently seen that Will Smith, the defensive end out of Choctaw, decommitted from Oklahoma State, right? Said he committed too early and, you know, he he wanted to get out of it. Ironically enough, it was after a camp with teams like Tulsa and North Texas there. Now, can anybody sit here and tell me with a straight face that there's a high likelihood that that gentleman decided Tulsa or North Texas were going to be better options than Oklahoma State? No, there's no way that happened. Unless there's some crazy unforeseen thing working behind the woodshed. Who knows? But it's likely not the case. It's likely that Tulsa and North Texas are not swinging in and still in Oklahoma State, guys. So that means he's likely hearing something else from other people. And this is the point of this conversation is be mindful of what a high school kid's looking at. Be mindful of what position a high school kid's being put in. Because there are a lot of people out there that do not have 
the best interest of your child at heart. Sometimes it's a university. Like, that does happen. Sometimes university just want you or your son or your daughter because they are very athletic. And again, I'm not always talking about you. I'm talking about, you know, a generalization. But we've got to get better as coaches. We've got to get better as parents. We've got to get better as recruiting analysts. We've got to get better as talent evaluators. Because these agendas that are being pushed are not typically beneficial for the kids. And that's what's getting lost in all the, the shuffle. Who cares if a kid decommits? At the end of the day, right? That's just peanuts. But once you start allowing a, a kid to quit on something, the word commitment no longer means the same thing. If you make them keep going to practice because they made a commitment, if you make them finish their high school career out because they made a commitment, they will be better for it in the long run. Because no matter how much technologically advanced things that we have in life, what we do physically on a daily basis is still going to be the most important thing in life. So when you see these commitments fall off and fall on, like let's maybe not go get so up in arms about it because it's likely not the kid. It's likely the outside stuff. But when a kid makes a commitment and they back out of that commitment, the word does not mean the same thing anymore. So if a kid gets out of commitments when they're seven, eight, nine, well, good luck. Good luck making them think commitments matter when they're 13. If a kid decides that commitment no longer matters at 13, okay, then good luck making them think that the commitment's going to kick in all of a sudden when they're 17. Sometimes we have to guide kids in the right direction. And you're seeing a lot of that not happen anymore. And it's a byproduct of the entire landscape to some degree. I'm sorry, but if you're showing up and you get a trophy just for showing up, the word commitment doesn't mean the same thing anymore. If you get to pitch, even though you missed two weeks of practice, every other player on that team knows the word commitment doesn't mean as much anymore. You're going to continue to see commitments fall on and fall off. You're going to continue to see recruiting numbers fluctuate. You're going to continue to see some kids commit somewhere and they're five-star, decommit from that place, and now they're all of a sudden no longer a five-star just because they decided they didn't want to go to that college. That'll continue to happen. But the reason I'm having this conversation, it's like almost a plea is if we as, as fans, we don't like all the NIL stuff, we don't like all the transfer stuff, then we have to be better at where we put our kids, like what situations we put our kids in. And again, I'll say it over and over, I'm not talking about you particularly, but again, there's a lot of people that do not watch this show that... They have no idea why Johnny and coach so-and-so don't get along. And they don't care. They think the coach is the problem all the time. And it used to be, well, go have a conversation with your coach. Do you have to run extra after practice? Do you have to get your grades up? Do you have to take more swings? Do you have to throw more balls? Do you have to run more routes? Do you have to use a jugs machine longer? Do you need better cleats? I mean, goodness me, nine times out of ten, your coaches know precisely what the problem is. But no matter what age group you are coaching, in coaching, parents are the most limiting factor. Right? Again, not talking about you. Y'all are y'all are awesome. 
but there's people out there that just do not help their kids. And there's seven on seven coaches out there that do not help your kids. The high school coach at least has a little extra investment in making sure that scholastically things measure up. Your high school coaches are typically going to be pretty honest with recruiters. They're, pr they're probably going to tell the recruiters nine times out of ten, yeah, that kid don't go to class. Yeah, that kid won't take care of his grades. Yeah, that kid's disrespectful of teachers. Whatever it is, high school coaches will typically – let those things kind of get around. Seven on seven coaches typically nowadays do not. It's about pushing agendas. It's about raising profiles. It's about making money. It really bothers me when you're seeing youth organizations charge thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars to quote unquote teach your kid for what i guarantee you with 100 percent certainty there is somebody probably in your local town that can teach your kid every bit as good as somebody you're going to pay thousands of dollars to i see it all the time and then you pay those thousands of dollars just to have some agendas pushed. These 707 coaches, right, they have alliances. They have buddies that are coaches at certain colleges. So again, I understand when we get up in arms about a commit that decommits. But until we all collectively do better, this is how it's going to be. The neighborhoods used to take care of each other. And that helped you build words like character, commitment, integrity, morals, all of that. That's part of your inner being. And what you, it is what it, it likely comes from sports. Goodness gracious. Sports teaches so much. Just being on time, working with other people, working to achieve something, pushing your body further than you thought it could ever physically possibly go, pushing your lungs further than you ever thought they could physically possibly go. It really, it, 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 it chaps my hide that this is how it is. But we have a chance to salvage it because... Y'all know my affinity for Michael Capana, running back out of Bishop Gorman. Well, thankfully, recently, we have kind of stumbled upon a two-for-one type of scenario. Another Las Vegas Bishop Gorman player, right, that is teammates of Michael Capana, Audric Harris is a three-star prospect according to 247. Now, there is some publications where he doesn't have um, ratings, which is great. It's great for us. When you look at him, okay, all right, you ready? Whenever we saw on um, social media recently some of the clips of um, Bruce, Arlen, Arlen Bruce, this is what Audrey Harris kind of looks like. So if you see some of those clips running around the internet of Arlen Bruce, at Oklahoma State, the, the Iowa transfer wide receiver, you will get a pretty good understanding of what Audric, Audric Harris can do. And again, don't give 13 hoots if, you know, he's not rated very high or not. I just, it doesn't matter because the offers list is amazing. Um, you know, I know he's very high currently on Arizona State, BYU, and in Pitt. Washington State could be a potential option, obviously, as well. Arizona's talked to him. This would be a good get. And at six foot, 190 pounds, he's he's got a frame to build to build with here. He really does. 
So if we can get this kind of two-for-one thing, which we've been successful in doing so recently, if you give me Micah Capana and you give me Audrick Harris, that, that boosts our numbers regardless of what Will Smith does or doesn't do. And let me know down in the comments. I mean, how do you feel about some of this stuff? I am almost to the point that if somebody decommits, SEC, you later, buddy. Now, I, again, I understand that things do come up, right? But I also understand that the word commitment should mean something. When you're committing to something, it used to be that was that. It used to be that that was the hook, line, and sinker contract. When you committed to do something, by golly, you were going to do it. I get it's not the same. But I also get that we have more people in these young men's ears than ever before. And I'm just trying to make a plea to parents out there. Be more mindful of what is happening. Because I promise you, there is somebody in your son or daughter or cousin or uncle or whatever's here that is not good for them. We all know this. This is applicable on the streets in life. We've all got that one friend that, eh, yeah, probably shouldn't take that advice. But I think as parents, sometimes we become complacent. And we are way too quick to defend the actions as opposed to understanding what led to those actions. There are situations that are unavoidable. If you're supposed to be held accountable for something and you can't get a hold of your coach and you've tried five, ten times, okay, things happen. Things, things do fall through the cracks. But having seven-on-seven -seven coaches push you somewhere because they want you to be there, that's not what's best for anybody. Yeah, well, yeah, sorry sorry, I got on a little bit of a rant on this one. Um, I'll make sure to do another show, obviously, this weekend. Um, i got to give a massive, massive congratulations to the Cowgirls of Oklahoma State. Coach Kenny Gajewski wins the regional, wins the super regional, and is heading to the World Series yet again four years in a row. Give me Bedlam for the national championship. It is... A viable option. And the Cowboys, we've been getting hot. I, you know, I was reluctant to say super hot at the right time, but we might be there. We dropped a stupid game to OU the other day. We got redemption today. Not only did we get redemption, but the redemption game booted them out of the daggone tournament. S-E, see you later, OU. You're gone. It feels good. And it Proved that them beating us the other day was in fact a fluke. So all their fans that got their 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 big W in, okay, you can have it. Congratulations. But enjoy watching us from home. Hi to y'all. That's all we got for this one. As always, I love you all. God bless. Go pokes. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to make this your first listen here on Locked On Oklahoma State. Later.